On this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast, we talk about the fucking prude from Rhode Island and his grimoire of bullshit. And also, hey, Dr. Eleanor, how do you look that good at 900? Let's do this. for helping me use my bookcase there you go welcome to devil's trap podcast (laughs) i'm diana i'm liz (laughs) and this week we're going to talk about season six episode 21 first uh let it bleed let it bleed uh so last week i was making a menstrual cycle joke and like things were just not great um and then i started cursing lovecraft and then i got really really sick so um i'm not gonna make that joke again i will point out that this was also the name of the 1969 rolling stones album and this was the fourth episode to be named after rolling stones song or album the other time was time is on my side and that was in season three season five was sympathy for the devil and season six was exile on main street so they originally also had called it the haunter of the dark which is interesting because if you saw this one and then the next one as we did the haunter mm-hmm. of the dark becomes really important through both episodes we're gonna talk about that again uh this was episode 21 it first aired may 20th 2011 and it first aired with episode 22 back to back and that was really because of time and smallville although they played it off like when they were talking about it we'll talk about that when we get to season 20 episode 22 uh i can literally tell you guys i'm squirreling right now there is a squirrel hanging from the oak my oak tree outside my new house and it is hanging from a tree and it may not make it so if we sacrifice the squirrel for this during this episode would be great. So squirrel. Uh, this episode was directed by John F. Showalter. We last saw him with direct mommy dearest. It was written by Sarah Gamble. All right. And we kick off on uh, March 15th, 1937 in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, it's a big storm guy typing a bunch, drinking, writing, finishes what he's writing And we have a door open and the lights flicker and he gets a pistol to go check out what's going on. And he locks the door behind him because he hasn't seen anything, but then pours himself a drink like Like you do. do. Like, oh shit, I have a firearm. You know what I'm going to do? And this is going to be a theme of this episode and the next one. I'm going to get a firearm and I'm going to drink because that seems like a great idea. Spoiler, it's not. Don't do that. Don't. Don't. (laughs) If you're going to have a, just stop drinking with the firearms, man. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the window gets smashed open and somebody's there, but while we, we don't really see this full body, we see there's partial silhouette and we've got our main person saying, we didn't know, I'm sorry. And then he falls and there's blood splatter. Pitter patter. We do. Pitter patter. But we do get a reveal on the manuscript that was being typed. It was Hunter in the Dark, Hunter of the Dark by H.P. Lovecraft. So now we know that our writer was supposed to be H.P. Lovecraft, the well-known. Well-known, controversial uh, shitbag. And so this was also dated (gasps) March 15th, 1937, which was the day that shitbag died. And technically he died of stomach cancer, but, you know, like maybe stomach cancer just makes you explode. I mean... Maybe. I don't know. I mean, (laughs) whatever. But I'm (sighs) not sad to watch that happen. (laughs) <laughs> so we've got sam and dean at bobby's dean's upset sam's researching but they're talking about how dean told Cass that he needs to fucking stop this shit with crowley he's very jealous so. that his boyfriend is stepping out on him with crowley and mm-hmm. cassiel is like no man he's just a friend you don't need to worry about anything we're just hanging out can't two dudes be friends and dean's just like i don't know so he's really really brooding oh, baby you you got what i need but you say he's just a friend anyways sorry that's where my brain went all right. Um, so they're still trying to find though, and Bobby's there and they're trying to figure out what, how 
what the method to open the gate to purgatory is so that they can stop and or beat Crowley and Castiel from doing this. And Bobby's like, BT dub, uh, Cass just wasn't here to just visit you, Dean, and have a moment. He was actually here to jack some shit because I got a journal missing. And that's fucked up, man. Like that's, that's so harsh, right? So not only is he stepping out on you, he also was like stealing shit from you. And like, basically he came over and be like, nah, babe, everything is fine here. I hug you. I love you. And then he went and stole something. That's fucking mean. That's pretty harsh. Pretty harsh. But don't worry because Bobby is a uh, a paranoid bastard, so he had a photocopy of the whole journal. Anyways, I love you, Bobby. That is this is a this is a great this is it is one of the great Bobby lines. You know, Bobby Singer, paranoid bastard, and yeah, it, it's mm-hmm. it's useful for a lot of things. I like it. I liked it. Um, and in that journal, he did find something. Basically, there were uh, a, a notation of events on March tenth of nineteen thirty seven. And it Phillips, which is what H.P. Lovecraft's name was, basically. This is my um, name. Yeah. Um, but Dean doesn't know who Lovecraft is. And, and why? They're all kind of why doesn't he know? Who, by why does he know who Lovecraft was? Because he was too busy having sex, uh, having sex with women. Touche. It's kind of funny. It is. It is. It's very wrong. But. <sighs> Bobby brings up that Lovecraft had this theme about opening portals to other dimensions, and that's why Moisha mm-hmm. paid him a visit. And um, I just want to say the name Moisha as many Moisha times Campbell. as I can because it's of the New York Campbells that have never been mentioned before. <laughs> I also love that there's Moisha, the New York Campbell. And oh. uh, yes, also, please make that show happen, please. Uh, so we cut to Lisa in Ben's place and Ben's reading a, um, graphic novel of Lovecraft stories. Nice tie in. Well done. Yes. Gold star. Yeah. It was Cthulhu tales. Yeah. And Lisa's hanging out with her new boyfriend, Matt. Um, and, uh, the front door gets smashed yeah, she, in. No, first she's bringing him a beer. Like she's just repeating well, yeah. patterns. Lisa, grow a backbone. Date a dude who can get his own fucking beer. You date a dude who brings you a beer. That's nice thing. Step do. up, Lisa. Like, no. Yes. It's oh. time she gets taken care of, Diana. It's time. She, after that oh. shit, she needs a man who treats her like a queen. She really just wanted an excuse to, she just really wanted an excuse to get up and not watch the baseball game. Are you kidding me? That she is was also fair because I would probably, <laughs> that's why I was like, I will go get you a beer. <laughs> and then she probably went outside and like smoked something and then like came back, like whatever her pleasure when, like, was. Sh- Cigarette, like, when, whatever. Like, checked her, I don't know, checked her <laughs> socials her phone, in the kitchen. Called her friend know, and like yeah. came back 45 minutes later with, oh shit, I forgot beer. your beer. <laughs> Exactly. See, it was a whole thing. But the door gets smashed in and they get attacked. Uh, Matt gets dead. Lisa gets nabbed. Ben tries to see what's going on and runs upstairs and calls Dean right away. Like he should, closed in his bedroom. But he can't, can't really give Dean a whole lot of info. Can't get to the, to the, you know, any weapons in the house. So Dean tells him to jump out the window, but it's too late because who's fucking there with Ben? Bud Crowley. Oh, honey, what are you doing? We, this mm. is bad. This is bad, baby. You know, put the phone down. Mm. Oh, oh mm-hmm. shit. Uh, yeah. So he tells him he's going to hold them hostage and so mm-hmm. that he and the Jolly Green can stand down. Yes. I would like to keep, I don't know if someone has, but I'd like to keep a running list of what Crowley calls Sam because they're always bring me joy. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So on the other end, we've got, you know, Sam, Dean, and Bobby trying to figure out what the fuck to do now because Crowley's got Lisa and Ben as a as leverage to keep them from trying to stop the mission to Purgatory. Uh, but you, know, we as we all know, they're not going to sit back as instructed by Crowley. No, no. shocker, no, not going to happen. So uh, they decide that Sam and Dean are going to go after and try to find. Lisa and Ben, while Bobby keeps tracking down the Lovecraft path. Okay. All right. That sounds fine. So how are Dean and and Sam going to go after Ben and Lisa? They call our friend Balti. And on the hood, on the hood of a 1976 Pontiac Grand Prix. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. It's a chemical car. It was, it was, it was amazing. So he was drinking Dom out of Sopranos Navel. And this is what I decided in here. It says, Diana, this is how you have to drink yours out of Babe's belly button. So uh, Diana was recently awarded a, a bottle of, of Dom for her Lovely. many years of service. That was a service, but like, it's not, um, Close enough. Corporate forever. slavery. No, um, <laughs> company. Well, yeah, she's at her job. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> but she got a really. I had a work anniversary. She had a work anniversary. Yeah, she got a really awesome bottle of champagne. And I think she should drink mm-hmm. it out of <laughs> I'm I'm just going to say I'm not going to do that. Look, okay, and if you don't know, Babe also has plug for his calendar. You can go buy his shirtless calendar at, I don't remember, Dave and Sir. Yeah, I think it's that. He's, he's done for this year. We'll see if well, there's next, next year. Well, next year, I'm sure there'll be a new one. I mean, there's many yeah. times for him. You can you can go check out picture of Babe without his shirt on. But he had a calendar. But we I'm sure we can do a shirtless one with a bottle okay. of Dom. And you drinking sure it out can. of his belly button. I'm sure we can. Just putting that idea away. <laughs> Oh, yeah. For the world. You're so welcome. Balthazar is not stoked about being called. Also, it, they're trying to explain like, hey, you should have a heart. Like, you should help us out. And he's like, but why? Oh, do you know why? Because Castiel is working with Crowley. Did you know that, sir? That's not what they say. Kind of, oh, That's not what they, they say. He's Crowley's butt buddy. Like, they are being very explicit about things. They have like, with these next two episodes, they just stop hiding shit. Like this poly group is just out there. Like this is like we're oh, we're getting finally to see what is shipping here, and it's whoa. All right then, okay. Oh well, but Balthazar is going to pretend kind of like he knew, but obviously he did not, and what? he is kind of not cool with it. Yeah. Um, uh, but he's not going to admit that, so he's just going to dip out. Yeah, and I also kind of <laughs> feel like he gets like this, like. Balti is like really getting the shit end of like the angel he stick. Does. Like he does. Poor man. Like so. he just got caught up in this shit and had like some bad friends. Mm-hmm. So he's out and he just he poofs out and then um but Dean says that no matter what, they're not calling Castiel because he thinks that Cass has to be on this and he can't trust him and blah blah blah. So Bobby is gonna go visit a Lovecraft super fan. And this guy's like they kind of like make this guy like like a cliche comic book nerd. Is that a good way you'd you can say that, it? or you could also call him a Lovecraftian. Um, that's Ooh. what I'm calling him. I think someone else called him that. But basically, his his place is just a shrine to Lovecraft, and his name is Judah. And on there's some things on his wall. There's like a sign that says "cultist" on board, which I kind of want. And uh, there is a tiger painting on his wall. That's the same tiger one that around. Andy had on his van in season nice. two simon yes. said and it's just you know i think it's really well done they pulled a lot of things they pulled stuff like from at this time um i think it's called arkham bazaar because uh-huh. that was one of arkham you know the batman thing came from lovecraft's arkham as much as i just like lovecraft there was some things that he did that you know whatever uh so uh anyway so they were able to get a lot he inspired of, some things that were there's always people yeah and this was kind of like one thing is interesting was you know t- when they were talking about how they were making this like set they're like it's mm-hmm. amazing what you can get off the internet now and you think about when this was you know it was the 2011 right was that the year? yeah Mm-hmm. Like we were just starting to kind of get into our consumer. We can almost oh, wow. get anything we've ever thought of. Like, and so this is like you know, the first thing think about like, oh my God, like I can go find all these, all these weird Lovecraft fans had a place to make a site where they just sold shit that like were make up of Lovecraft shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So now we've got we got Bobby there interviewing him, and he's basically pretending to be pretending that he's writing an article about the importance of Lovecraft's liter- literature contributions, basically. And this guy's like, "Oh, what about the? You know, are you working with the other guy that was just here? Uh, he looks like Colum- he wears a trench coat, looks like Columbo, talks like Rain Man." Yes, and okay. also he says that he's there because he's heard this guy had a large collection of Lovecraft's letters. And if you mm-hmm. didn't know, like Lovecraft wrote over a hundred thousand letters, like he like had insane amount. And so I'm just like, yeah, of course, like those would be things that you could collect. Would be kind of cool. And mm-hmm. we also learn that Judah is uh, in a long term online relationship. 
and mm -hmm. that yeah uh he bobby wants to know what happened on march 10th 1937 and so judah's telling him that lovecraft had this dinner party which is pretty unlikely like lovecraft was just kind of like a loser like for the sometimes he was social but usually he just like stayed at his aunt's house in rhode island like hmm yeah he and he wouldn't be like having people to block you know that just wouldn't have happened but whatever yeah and that basically the the story is they were trying to open a portal but that nothing happened because well there wasn't anything in the newspaper the next day so obviously nothing happened maybe a hangover <clears throat> and he goes to pull out this letter to share it with bobby and is talking about how, you know, hey, they just want to open the story to the other dimension. Maybe that maybe whatever's there is friendly. And Bobby pops off, cannot help himself with it's never friendly. Which is very funny. Yeah. And I thought but, that was very Giles to me. Like it like kind of had yeah. that very just like, I'm trying to play my role. And then just like, you idiot, how dare you try and like you can't open a portal to another dimension. It's never friendly. And so he had like he didn't have like he had letters about dinner. They're all gone because the guy in the yep. trench coat stole them. Bobby mm -hmm. then also calls Lovecraft an idiot for trying to jimmy a portal open. Yeah. Which he was. Okay. And so we're going to yeah. talk about why Lovecraft was an idiot or why people who believe in Lovecraft is an, are idiot or idiots. I don't know. So, Lore? <laughs> or why people who believe in Lovecraft is an, are idiot or idiots. I don't know. So, Lore-ish? Uh, all right so uh if you don't know uh he was a self-proclaimed racist classics and a prude uh but you know what he wasn't he was not a believer in the occult and so diana let me ask you this question is the necronomicon a real book i think there is a necronomicon i just don't think it's the one that's in the evil dead series no, no, there is no, no such okay. thing as a Necronomicon. It is something that Lovecraft invented, but took oh. on such a life of its own that now, like, you think that they're actually, like, people think that the Necronomicon was based on the thing. And Lovecraft got off on this a lot because basically, like I said, he wrote over 100. He created this. Yeah. He, he created, created this, this whole mythos. Lore. He created this landscape. And in those 100,000 letters, he was writing to other writers. So other writers were picking picking up pieces of these universes and lands that he was writing about and using that as a plot device. And so thing mm. in like 1977, the Simon ne Necronomicon was published. And so people are just like, Oh, but that's like, it was the real one. Like, it was like, no, it's still like, it's all made up, but people still like get Epic. so into it that there's like, no, 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 it's yeah. real. It's like, I, and I think that's, I think that's hilarious. Right. And Lovecraft kind of epic. It is epic, right? And ep Lovecraft was quoted as saying, "It's rather good fun to have this artificial mythology giving it an air of verisimilitude by wide citation." Because that's, I imagine, how he talked, like a fucking prude from Rhode Island. Mm. So uh, in John Engel, he had wrote this article, and it was called Cults of Lovecraft, the Impact of H.P. Lovecraft's Fiction on Contemporary Occult Practices. It's a very, very, very long title. And he cites a number of sources, including the letters of Lovecraft himself, to show that Lovecraft believed in an ordered, rational world built on science and reason. So Engel also pointed out that within Lovecraft stories, it's never the good people who are practicing their rituals, but it's the hillbillies or the degenerates. And has that mm. stopped people from using his stuff in their magical practices? Mm. No, it has not. Nope, nope. Did he actually pull any of this from authentic lost spell books for the rights in his books? No, he did not. You can actually cross-reference cross many of the books he mentions in his stories in the Encyclopedia Britannica. So basically, like, if you go into the Encyclopedia Britannica and you look up, like, alchemy books and there's, like, a list of the reference books, that's what he did. Like, he went there and he was like, okay, this book called so-and-so, he would put those things into his stories or do things that kind of took off of it. So we see this actually happen in Supernatural and it happens in the next episode quite a bit and in here too that all these things that are sort of based on other things but they're not they're all based on something that's fake but it becomes a part of pop culture and almost becomes real 
That's so crazy. It's like it's like a like an urban legend almost. Like, almost, but also, right? But it's even deeper like, than that. It's bigger than that. It's, yeah. In a way. And so what's weird is that he actually influenced what has become like modern magical sex. Uh, and it's really what's is mind blowing. It's also really hard to tell what satire and what isn't and it's very evidence that lovecraft influenced most practitioners of chaos magic and it's generally accepted that alistair crowley took a lot of his ritual language like from uh for like lovecraft from the oto which is a real nerd thing um but it's just that it's all made up someone else it's just just, this is very weird vicious circle right it's like manufactured magical mythos. Yeah, I think that's a yeah. Basically, it's all somebody made something up, and it be that mythos be, is like uh, well, I haven't even talked about it yet in here, but the like a tulpa. The when somebody believes in something so much, it becomes true. It makes it real, yeah, right. And so people have based some of their magical theory on it, and saying like, oh, like them and like Lovecraft and Crowley, they all have this old book that we don't know about. But they don't, mm. right? But they're all like it's this grimoire of bullshit that everybody gets, you know, pulling from. And the grimoire of bullshit. The grimoire of bullshit. And actually created like so we're gonna talk about just one quick little I, I don't know if I can call them a magical order, a cult, or I, I still I can't tell if they're satire, if they're real, but the esoteric order of Dagon, the EOD, which also sounds like something that you go to the doctor for. Uh, so in Lovecraft stories, the EOD worships the father Dago and mother Hydra and Cthulhu pretending to be a Masonic order, right? So that's this Masonic order that's within Lovecraft that right. is fake, that he made up, right? Right. So, but these people say that they are that that group that was in that book. They're the they are the real embodiment of the fictional group. Right. So you can go to esotericofdagon.net and read all about their philosophy, what they believe in. Um, you can find out that they work with the Yog Sotho theory of H.P. Lovecraft and related areas and authors in mystical and magical ways. In case you were wondering, Yog sotho theory is a term that was coined by hp lovecraft to refer to his unique mythos and cosmology of cosmic horror so the world that's what lovecraft called the bullshit world that he made up i like cosmic horror that's kind of cool cosmic horror is a good word but so this group right okay so they practice worshiping and practicing in the made up the made up mythos that that he made up Right. Um, and so Yog Sothoth is, is excuse me flashing on if you watch Y O G S O T H O Sothoth, Sothoth, whatever. So it's a deity in the Lovecraft mythos that is basically the gatekeeper of the great old ones or the key in the gate. And so that's associated with like knowledge, time, and space. And it's this idea of like infinite forms and presence, right? So it's this idea that. The universe is vast and it's ancient and it's populated by powerful and otherworldly beings that exist beyond human comprehension. And these entities known as the great old ones or the outer gods, they're usually depicted as ancient gods or cosmic forces with immense power and indifference towards humanity. Right. And so they, Mm -hmm. they live in dimensions beyond like what we can see. And if you see them, like if they come into our world, they drive you to like chaos and madness. So like, if like one of those monsters come in here and you see like Cthulhu, Cthulhu then like you'd be like, ah, oh, a crazy, a crazy, you know. So there is. So these people are like, if you and I started like deciding that our new religion that we follow and live by is like by Neil Gaiman's American Gods or something like that, and we just follow those gods now or something. Correct, correct. If we took that as our our dogma, our that was our book, that was our gospel. That's where we pulled our practices. These people from. took a fic. I mean, obviously, it's inspired by other mythos in a way. Well, they are because but also H- because created, Lovecraft also- stuff was inspired by other mythos. It's just like correct. in like we'll see in the next episode uh in episode 22 of supernatural yeah. all the enochian sigils that they have up there which are not enochian sigils they are but they're based on other things that are based right. on 
those sigils and those sigils are based on different hebrew stuff so it's like all of this like round and round and round thing right so but these are sorry, actual sorry. people i was just making a trying to make a parallel so yeah yeah, yeah. And these are actual people these are i think right i think they're unless actual you, people they're sarcastic. like i don't know if this is sarcasm or not because like on the on the website it says they do things like they do they have methods that are trying they do to try to reach to this whatever the fuck they're trying to do so yeah. they do uh they do dreaming right and it's with a capital d because it's conscious dreams or altered states which we explore the human dreamlands but then shift focus to the other dreamlands of foreign and non-human energies we use capital d dreaming to descend deeper and deeper into the night sea towards last void where as is and that they i put copy this and they said were and they misspelled it so basically where as a thoth someone dwells right so like I, that sounds like you're getting really high and looking for the d and then they hmm. also do manifestations the members are encouraged to join common projects like deep research or magical workings they can perform rituals uh i guess something happened during covid uh they said they wanted the lodge system to get up and running again and because in physical lodges members get, oh so i guess they were doing this shit online uh while uh you know covid was a thing yeah, you know, before it went went away. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. So all of them are. If, if you're in the EOD, there's a degree system, right? Because everyone like it's like a black belt system. So uh, all members are Dagonists, right? So that's like your your Venn diagram. So everyone's a Dagonist, but then you can be different things in there. So the practical degrees guide the initiates along the backward path. So so the left hand path, like if you were you know worshiping you know mutward like in like the you know a theist or whatever, but you have the backwards path because you're always working backwards, right? Um, because you're going to the final pilgrimage. So you can be a disciple, an acolyte, a dreamer, a wayfarer, an adept, an arch dreamer, or a pilgrim of the abyss. They also have many special degrees like oracles of the old one, the master, and the grandmaster. Members may hold more than one degree and the names of a certain degree may vary. So I am very much hoping that there's like someone who has, like they're like the badges you get at cons, you know, where you're like, oh, I, I met so and so. badges. Yes, I hope they all. I was thinking like Girl Scout badges, like when you had your like little sash. Yeah, and, for the, on the, and they had a little sash coming on. So uh, in the last thing in this, on on their website, it said the order decided to become silent towards the outer world back in 2012. And then it kind of looks like it stopped there. But then it's like news Walpurgis 2022. And Walpurgis is a holiday. I forget what. what Whatever. Hmm. But the EOD has just reemerged from a decade of silence towards the outer world. Read more in this announcement pedophile file. And you can contact us through this email. EODs never actively search for members. Those who hear the call or inspect to approach us instead and ask about membership. And then they have this thing about like if you membership expired, you can reach back out to them. And then the things like I got with the dreaming and stuff is from their pedophile. Um but they just I don't know. I don't know if that's real. I still don't know. Either. I'm unsure. Is it because I'm like, sure. are you people who think this is like, are you worshiping chaos magic? Which p people worship. Ca they do chaos magic. It's a thing that you know, things are really it's fucked right now. I think you can stop. I'm cool. You can. You. you know, I we don't need any more of that. I'm, I, I've had enough chaos. Like I'm good. Yeah. Um, We're pretty set. But or is it just a literary mechanism? Fuck Weird. you, Lovecraft. Keep people buying Lovecraft books. Fuck you, racist piece of shit. All right. So that's it. All right. We're oh. done with Laura now. All right. So back to talking about who was at this, again, this dinner that Lovecraft never would have had because he did not believe in the occult, nor did he have friends that he hung out with right. in person. Yeah. So Bobby's on the phone with Sam and he's like, look, every guest that was invited to this party is dead or disappeared within a year of it. So... But I'm going to go talk to one of the people that were there. And Sam's like, wait, what? You said that everybody that was there was dead or disappeared. And ding, ding, ding. Refill for Diana. <laughs> Diana is pressing her stop for champagne button. Uh -huh. And Babe is bringing us in. So Liz will be playing bumper music while she's doing that. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, they figure out, though, there was one person that was there wasn't an invited guest. It happened to be the nine-year-old son of the maid 
who is now 83 years old and locked in a mental ward where he's been ever since that night. And poor dude, man, like that oh, is a lot. That is, that is a lot. And so we'll have to remember when we take our break and when we talk, start our next episode to talk about the mental ward that I was at this weekend. Cause we completely forgot to talk about yeah. We were so in such a hurry to get this episode up and going that we didn't talk about what Liz did this weekend. Okay, we'll do that for the no, next No, and you've got good ones. I know. <clears throat> All right. So Dean's basically decided that instead of trying to call Cass or and because Balti wouldn't help, that he's just going to, quote unquote, inquire, a.k.a. torture a shit ton of demons uh, until someone tells them where... Crowley is and it's very he's being very efficient and very rough but he has jumper cables attached to this demon's nipples or i forgot where they're attached maybe just in my brain they're in his nipples but they also just this is why i don't like using jumper cables and why it took me so long to put like the trickle charger on my jeep and i'm gonna have to go back out to my mom's house where baby is my bc is living right now don't go steal her um and so it's i need to put the trickle chargers and i'll have to buy another battery again but i'm afraid because i see things like this and i know that I know that I know it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I mean, don't don't put them on your nips. I mean, but they just look, find they, out. But I know we just look at them. I'm like, what if I don't know how I'm going to slip from there from like to be like electrocuting myself? But it's some like some bizarre final destination scenario. Yeah, yeah. yeah thanks, supernatural. Oh my you gosh. gave me a so, complex. Uh, yeah. And so Sam's kind of trying to talk Dean up the ledge. Apparently he is running on whiskey, coffee, and whatever else he's taking. So. And I think that implies that Dean's on like meth. And <laughs> is it Adderall? Adderall. I don't know. Speed, I don't know. coke. I don't know Something. what he's doing, but I also think that he is not pooping solid. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is. But Dean's still like committed to this. So Sam is just going oh, to it. Dean is flipping out and is focused. Yup, it's speed. <laughs> <laughs> so Sam's going to go outside and call to Cass and he kind of prays to Cass like begging to help them you know if you have any heart at all and we don't he's not there Sam doesn't see him but he is there we see him he's there and he listens to this and he's invisible boo invisible girl invisible yeah again I don't know like I don't know if I want to do that or not a little hummingbird just flew up and said hi to my, my in my window it's adorable I'm like fucking Snow White <laughs> you are so Castiel and Crowley are together now because Cass is going to call him out about taking Lisa and Ben. And Crowley's like, uh, yeah, I didn't touch Sam and Dean like we agreed, motherfucker. And uh, so everybody wins and you've hit your quota of putting humans out of bounds. So boom. Yeah, he basically tells Cass to go fuck himself, right? And he's just like, mm -hmm. man. And like, hey, you want to stop me? Fine, freaking purgatory. So, uh... There we go. But then Cass is getting like some kind of like a, he's getting his angel oh, oh, mental message. Someone, someone's hurting me. I don't know. Someone's mm -hmm. calling me on the phone. My brain. Brain, brain angel call, brain, phone? brain call. Don't it's not, you don't get a blood bowl. You just get a headache. Yeah. yeah. Blood bowl is much more fun. And, and it's Baltazar. And they're going to meet up in the woods. And what does Baltazar ask him? Asked him about his deal with the king of Hades. How does he say it? He goes, are you in flagrante with the king of Hades? And in flagrante, is the act of doing something wrong, especially having sex with someone who is not your husband, your wife, or your usual partner? <gasps> so basically it's saying, Cass, are you stepping out on Dean to be fucking Crowley? That's what's happening right here, and it's beautiful. <sighs> And Cass tries to lie and say no, but he comes around like, look, it's a means to an end. And uh, Balthazar pretty much knows that. I mean, they both, they both know that Balthazar knows because of Sam and Dean. But uh, Balthazar is pointing out some real concerns. Like, I don't know, that's too much power when you take on all of those souls because you'll have to be the vessel. Uh, and it's going to be like a nuclear reactor and you could take out a chunk of the planet. What is this now? Like, this know. is the first time we're hearing this, right? And, yes. you know, really also we can cut this to... Balthazar and your so finally like cast this KO to his friend because his friend is like look I know you're fucking around on your man you need to come clear and he's like fine yeah I am but not really fun. like I'm not doing that like there's just this thing I have to get done and then he like brings up this whole like you're gonna be a vessel for what now and this is something we've not heard about and then also that you might be exploded yeah, that's all new. So we knew they were going to go get the souls out of purgatory. But we didn't know that they had to like 
we inhabit a vessel, aka. I Cassiel. still don't understand this, right? So, what are you just like hoovering them? Is it like in Spaceballs where it's like she's yeah. gone from blow to suck, and you just like go to purgatory and you're like, <laughs> and you just like straw up all those soul? Like, how is this working? I don't know. Okay, it's real weird. Yep, it's very not explained. Nope. And so Cass has to hold them all in him, and apparently it's like a bunch of nuclear reactors, and he's not strong enough to hold them all. Yeah, and then we get the angel version of, are you with me or get me? Mm-hmm. And Balthy's it with him. All so. right. So we go to the mental hospital where Bobby is meeting with the man who is the son of the maid who was at the dinner party and asking him questions. And, of course, we also realize that Castiel also was there before Bobby got there, pretending to be a reporter as well. One step ahead, and, Matt uh, Castiel. <laughs> yeah. We've got a lot of, like, it's a very comic, uh, comic boogie, I think. Yeah, it is. It is. But so Bobby wants to ask about it. And the guy's like, look, I'm pretty unimpressed with, like, Bobby's questions. He's like, yeah, everybody asks about it. We did, they did a spell and everybody said it failed. But do you believe in monsters? Yeah, and I'll buy it straight. What the fuck? Like, are we in like a little house in the prairie? What you you just tell me what it is, and I'll buy it straight. And I'd be like, shut the fuck up, old man. Like, and like I'm in a mental hospital. I'm not stuck in 1911. And yeah, the man's like, if you if you go saying that, they'll lock you in here. But Bobby wants to know what he saw. And the story we get is that the spell worked. A door opened to this other dimension. Something invisible came through. (gasps) What? And it went into his mother. (gasps) And she wasn't the same. And she even smelled different. Which I think is just an interesting tidbit. That was an interesting point. What did your mom smell like before? What did she smell like now? But then she disappeared. And one by one, everybody else started dying. Also, update on the squirrel. So, the cat has now noticed the squirrel. All right, continue. Uh, but I like that Bobby says, sorry about your mom. <laughs> but not in that tone. <laughs> sorry about your mom. But it touches him. And because nobody has ever said that. And so he offers Bobby um, a picture. And, you know, this is, it was this thing. And we'll just keep weaving into, like, uh, one of the things in my ghost hunt last weekend was, you know, like, if you're nicer to the ghost, like, they're more likely to talk to you. <laughs> like, then if you're mean, the same thing goes with, like, the guy who's been stuck in a mental hospital for 80 years because um, he saw a fucking something come through when a portal. Was, and his mom disappeared when he was nine. Yeah, got, And his mom got possessed by something. And disappeared. And disappeared. And they decided he was crazy. So what the fuck happened to his mom? I don't know. This is all we see is the back of a photo. It says Eleanor in 1935. And Bobby says, I'll be damned. Uh-uh. So we see, we go back to Dean still like, like torturing demons, but he's getting sloppy well, because he has the a me- giant syringe. He has a giant has a syringe giant full syringe. of like blood. And I don't mind needles, but fuck that. Like what? I don't even know where you get that. It's like, do you call up? It's like, I want Look the most comical needle. needle that you have. <laughs> like I need to right? do and he's there, in, but he's the the combination of coffee, whiskey, and speed has apparently gotten to him because he's getting sloppy. He needs to shit his pants real bad. <laughs> and he breaks the line on his de- uh, devil's trap, though. He does. That's the problem. He does. And so, it was also, he's taunting the demon. And like, this is the thing, helpful. right? Like, if you're going to taunt somebody while you're torturing them, you need to make sure that you're safe and they can't get you. <laughs> because yes. if they get free, they're going to be real mad. <laughs> Extra mad. Yes. So, so maybe he should have been demon like, talking about his mom or whatever you were doing. <laughs> so he gets a demon flinged and it's getting choked out. But guess who shows up? <laughs> No, don't spit your wine out. Castiel appears and smites this demon. And Dean's just like, I didn't ask for your help. I was fine. Fine. Totally fine. It's fine. You didn't have to come, man. I didn't need you. I didn't call you. But either way, uh, he's... he's, They have to have a conversation about Lisa and Ben, obviously. Dean does not believe that Cass didn't know anything about Lisa and Ben. Um, and he's like, Cass is like, why wouldn't you trust me at this point in time? I do everything you ask. I come when you call. And I even saved you again. Yeah, look you at this shit. Trust look me. at my list. I've got the receipts here. I've been like doing what you say. Trust I'm your friend. Me. I've earned it, right? Don't you trust me, baby? You need to stand behind me or stand down. Uh oh. 
Which is exactly the ransom note that Crowley basically gave. Yeah, him. I mean, he basically says that he'll bring Lisa and Ben back if he stands behind him. Which is just like read the room, 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 room. yeah, read the read room. The room. Cass. So Dean's like, nah, and Cass flaps Kiss out. My ass. Obviously, kiss my ass, dude. You just fuck off. Mm-hmm. And I think you're kind of right there, right? Like that's a that's a dickish thing to say. Like I like have the ability to save your. <sighs> ex-girlfriend and the thing that nothing but the kid you basically view as your son Mm -hmm. but i won't do it unless you do what i say damn bitch like that's cold pretty pretty brutal yep but now we find out what bobby saw in that photograph and this is exciting i bet you love this thank you my girl crush and bobby together Mm -hmm. bobby's at a cabin in the woods visiting fucking dr eleanor visiak hot professor dr whatever eleanor (laughs) So, um, and of course there's like sigils all over the house and he's like, I found you here. You know, she's like, of course I've got safe houses. He's like, yeah, but I was able to find you. So you probably need to be safer. Let me like help protect you. And she's like, "Mm, no, let's have a drink. And (laughs) then she basically just like, like, did you come here to chat? AKA, do you want to fuck? Like, I'm pretty (laughs) sure she thinks Bobby is there for a booty call. And I am down with that. Like, I mean, I wouldn't blame him. Hang on. Mm. so basically there's a joke they have like a little exchange about how like yeah he knows what she is that she came from purgatory and obviously that means she fibbed about her age ha 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 by about 900 years ha, ha, ha. What, what? but and even also i'm just like what you're a badass bitch right like we don't need to make mm-hmm. these jokes now but he's like what's going on and she's like look i'm you know I didn't always lie to you. I'm your friend. I didn't go out and ask them to crack that door open. I just happened to be what fell through. And I happen to fucking like it here over on this side. So I don't want to turn into a bloody wasteland. Why the fuck do you think I helped, you know, um, I, I was helping everybody with the sword and trying to get them to stop Eve and the dragons and all this shit. She Duh. gave him her sword of Gunther. Yeah. I think it was Gunther. Yeah. Whatever, whatever it was. Uh, it was whatever. sort of yeah. goo- that something one. that was Nordic sounding. <laughs> yes. Because she's. Gustav? She's yeah. on their side. Yeah. She's awesome. She's on their side. So Bobby's like, well, there's an angel looking for you. And it's well, pretty and fucking he also dangerous. Is like, what, but you still like you killed H.P. Lovecraft. Oh, yeah. And she's like, what? He couldn't even write hello. And I just think that's a that's also why I love her because she's like whatever yeah. like who gives a shit that's if I fucking right. killed Lovecraft that's right bitch love you so Bobby's like look you got to get ahead of this angel that's coming for you though because he really wants to open purgatory and she's like no nah, it's too dangerous uh, Bobby's like well I'll protect you she's like nah I'm, you're just a man I'm better off protecting myself that's damn right and she's like girl I can take care of myself like I've been doing this for a long ass time I am 900 fucking years old I ate HP fucking Lovecraft like I think I can handle myself but Bobby is like look like you don't know this angel like he's in this thing and it's got this there's this triad thing happening and we don't we don't know what's going on like it's fucking weird and like now you're in the middle but he leaves her anyways there he does he does so we've got uh it's dark at bobby's house and sam pours himself a drink and now, both is dark except mm-hmm. now sam's just drinking in the kitchen because we're just like yeah. everyone he looks we're, like he's start, like secret drinking because like it's dark yeah, right it's dark, like he's yeah, just pouring with he's pouring whiskey pouring in the dark that's not a good sign it you should have is. lights on when you pour yourself drinks unless you're hiding it yeah no so Balthazar is there and he's like, look, I'm on your team now. So that's why I'm back. And, um, and they get, and they get Dean there and Dean's like, mm, no, I, don't really I believe this. And um, Balthazar is like, look, uh, this is about survival. It's not really about like side or decency or anything else. I just don't like Castiel's plan. The souls are going to be like nuclear reactors. It's going to be fucking Chernobyl. Fuck that noise. I want to, I want on your team because I need to stop this shiz. Yeah, so now we're also like he's bringing up how da- sw- like how dangerous this is, and they're like, "What? We yeah. didn't know this. This uh, is wait, new- this is new mm-hmm. information." Yeah, 
And he's also like, I also know where Lisa and Ben are. I just can't go there because it's angel proof. <gasps> okay, fine. That's good. That's good. And he's yeah. like, look, you know, I can get you as close as I can. And, but you're going to be on your own. What, what location am I going to go to? I'm going to think and look through my Rolodex, the places where I can film stuff. Um, okay, we're just going to go to this, I, this abandoned warehouse. We're just, I don't think we've done angel that this season. Um, we're angel just going to go to a, a warehouse. Yep. But there is great, industrial site. Industrial site. But there is great iron work because I'm very obsessed with iron right now as I'm trying to find a bed. So, I'm go. so they go up to this industrial building and uh, they you know, kill a demon guard, get inside. Baltzard bails, obviously, because he can't go in anyways. Yeah, and just walking around in the start- dark with guns, you know. That's yeah. a good thing, but, you know, just like. But then they split up. With fingers on triggers, just walking through. Dark warehouse. Cool. Cool, cool. Just after finishing a whiskey After drink. drinking a bunch yeah. of, you know, a bunch of whiskey. It's fine. They probably drink yeah. it in the car. That's cool. So they go separate, which is never a good thing, as we all know by now. Duh. Duh. Why are you splitting uh, up? We know not to do that. Mm-mm. So Sam gets, of course, gets sneak attacked and grabbed. And he gets thrown at, like, a cell? Uh, was there a know. cell Some there? Weird, I, don't, I don't understand I don't what know. this is. And then we cut to we cut to Lisa and Ben, and they're tied to a beam. Like, okay, mm-hmm. like, you found a beam to put them on. And we have a kind of funny scene, though, with, like, we hear a lot of noise, and, like, every time, like, a demon, like, leaves the room that was guarding them, <laughs> they hear, like, a big fight scene, and he gets, like, thrown and then we have another one go out and then he gets a fight scene and, yeah, like, and you the never noises. see it it's, it's actually all pretty just clever you don't sound. see the fight and yeah. again that also funny. leads to like kind of the comic booky of this it does because you're like yeah. there should be like if i had a comic book you would hear like bang pow, pow like that yeah. would be really fun right there wham yep yeah uh but who is it of course it's dean he's there he sees lisa and ben and he's gonna go cut them free but guess what as an insurance policy crowley put a demon in lisa she possessed. She possessed. And yeah. it's really funny. Uh, I meant to write this down, but you know, whatever. I didn't. Uh, one, uh, Le- the actress, Cindy Sampson, who uh, plays Lisa, said in this scene that she was very like concerned about holding a knife against Ben's throat. Just because, you know, she felt like it was, like, too dangerous, but it was, like, a plastic knife, and Ben's was, like, yeah. whatever, like, it's fine. But also, she said, like, the entire, like, time that she was on the show that she really wanted to be evil. So, during things, like, you know, when she saw, like, the the vampire for, like, Live Free or Twihard was coming, yeah. she was, like, oh, you know, I was, like, really, like, hoping I have to be a vampire in that, but it actually, you know, became Dean. But, yeah, I think that would have been cool if it was Lisa, like, would have been there. But she got, she was happy that yeah. she finally got to be a demon here, so I thought thought that was cool that was cool yeah and so she's gonna be real mean and this gets real dark and i don't really like it and the things that she's saying in front of her child i don't like uh so i mean she- it's not hers i mean she's saying that the demon is relay relays that she can hear the real Lisa inside of the body or inside her mind and is saying all this horrible shit like that Dean is Ben's dad, and I do feel like this is something that is unresolved in Supernatural. Yeah. Hey, Jensen, bring those back, and like, here I will just keep pinching, pitching, pinching. We're just pinching you shows until like we're done. So, yeah. um, for the Supernatural universe, Ben really is Jensen's is is really Dean's Dean's son. Dean's son, and so whole series come of that. But cause then she's just like, no, I'm kidding. But like, is she? We don't know. She's a demon. She's lying. But then she's also like, oh, your mom's a whore or a slut, she said. She calls her mom's a slut. And then that. Yeah, she's like negging the herself. Mistake ever. Right? It's just, oh, it's so, it's so sad and gross, like to be saying. And, yeah, and she and calls Dean a C minus lay. And he's very yeah, offended at that. And I just think that's funny. And I was just like, well, you know, like maybe he just doesn't try because he's so pretty. <laughs> <sighs> so but she's like she like says that like lisa wishes she had never met ben and that is her second biggest mistake after keeping ben Ooh, oh, ooh. so harsh it is really harsh but harsh dean tells him he's lying and is basically able to like finally get her her grip off of ben but as we all know dean ain't gonna be able to kill lisa no, but he could exercise her, which seems like a pretty yes. good plan. All right, let's go with this is. plan. Let's exercise Lisa. How good is that going to go? Really great until she says, fuck this and stabs herself. Oops. Fuck. Fuck. Meat suit going to die. Yep. This Not is good. just a dead meat suit. And he's just like, you know what? I'm just going to finish my Latin anyways. 
He has to. I mean, what are your options? You're either going to actually kill her for real, or you have a maybe a shot if you're able to. Like, what do you do? Like, my demon enough. girlfriend? Like, does she just like stay? Like, I don't want like inside Lisa to die, and like they take turns, or she <sighs> lets like the inside Lisa come out for like <laughs> to like. And so now it's we just dark. have this wacky like. So here's your next series: this wacky half demon, half regular Lisa, and they are a single parenting pen. <laughs> Who's a hunter? (laughs) So So. they he finishes the exorcism, and now we're gonna remember he wouldn't teach Ben how to use a gun. Well, now Ben needs to learn how to use a gun real fast. Okay, so why didn't you just like why didn't you teach this this child proper gun safety to begin with? All right, so now we've got to be like, okay, Ben, take my terrible choice for a weapon here, and we're just gonna duck hunt our way through this. Yeah, but he's and, also and got a catatonic, asked, and he slaps him like he fucking he slaps does. this child on the face. Worst boyfriend ever. We're like, fuck I mean, you, get away from my child. I, I think there's a pass in this situation. On I that. think there are other things you can do besides slap. Why is that your instinct? Your well, instinct is freaking out too. Your instinct should not be to slap a child they're in the face. Freaking out. It should not. But no, they're all freaking. There are the other out. things. There's so many other things you could do. Like with my cat, when I get really mad at her, you know what I do? I blow in her face because I like it, it really freaks her out. I don't think that would have worked in this situation. I <laughs> just went ahead and blew in Ben's face. That's worse, isn't it? That's so much creepier. <laughs> I don't know which one's the worst stepdad move ever. Anyways, so <laughs> so he, so he slaps Ben, which is just awful, and um, and, and then he barks just... instructions about how to shoot. And then to pull it together, and, and we gotta get their mom. Whatever. Okay, yeah, it's all bad. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous so... until they get to Sam. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, but I'm also impressed. Little 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 Ben picks it up pretty quick. Well, he's just, blast, just like, blasting demons right and left now. He's doing really good. And then like he gets to Sam, he's like, "Big, give the gun to him," which then like deflates his ego again. Like, what the fuck? Like he was a fine yeah. shot. Like Ben wanted to be a hunter. Just give the kid a gun. Let him do what he loves. Right. And then magically, as they go out and get outside, the jeep perfectly pulls up as they're running out, which just seemed like weird timing. But I guess Sam was able to get out and get the jeep. No, say so yeah, Sam stole it. Sam stole an SUV. So whatever. So he stole it. It was a jeep and they're and they're gonna haul ass to the air to the hospital yeah. airport why did i say airport oh, to the hospital and dean's just and like we're fine everything is great everything's this, fine. Is fine. Everything's fine. this is She's fine she's gonna be fine much how i live my it, life this is fine <laughs> da, da, da. but when you get to the hospital not so fine no it's, it's a very not. weird prognosis though yeah. basically so lisa's unconscious yeah, with a lot of tubes yeah for some reason dean and ben are there demon intubation and, uh, she, she got in, well she doesn't have a demon anymore she got exercise but she gets stabbed in her out. stomach not in her lungs right i don't know <clears throat> but dean's apologizing to ben and ben they ben does not want to hear it so he bails He's done. but guess who's yeah. there fucking Cass. castiel shows up and dean's mad he's basically like look he says that she's going to be dead by midnight it's a very weird prognosis that they just they just know she's gonna be dead by midnight and Cass is just like i didn't come for you but so it's just like okay like i fuck shit up i have flown in i'm gonna try and make things better i'm gonna boop her mm-hmm. all right she's healed right we're all She'll good now right dean's like thanks but that doesn't change anything but why i fixed her so Castiel's like yeah i just want to fix what i could mm. and dean's like well i got one other request <gasps> then and this is where this episode makes me angry. Go on. So we get a scene where Lisa's awake, Ben's there, and Dean kind of walks up to the doorway. And you hear that Ben's telling Lisa that they were in a car crash and she hit her head, but she's okay now. And Dean knocks on the doorway and like, hi. And, and Ben asks who he is. Because... Dean's like, oh, I'm just happy you're okay. I'm the guy who hit you guys. I lost control for a minute. I'm so sorry. I'm just glad you're both okay. I lost control glad... for a minute because uh... I'm in a nine just grunge band. Yeah, exactly. I thought that too. <laughs> uh, and uh, and she, Lisa's like, we're okay. That's what's important. And Dean's like, take care of your mom to Ben. And they're both tearing up. And I'm tearing up. But I'm fucking pissed because he eternal sunshine to them. He fucking eternal sunshine them against their will. Without consent. You can't eternal sunshine someone against their will. You can't eternal sunshine. I don't think it's awful anyways. But especially against their will. 
Yeah, without their consent, he took the memories. All of the fun times Ben has. Like, what did they get replaced with? He like, had good memories like, of a like, male. Like, and also, Walmart, they're always going to feel like uh, something. Like, he's got a year where something's going to feel wrong, right? Like, yeah. something's just going to feel off. Like, because those you can't make that right. You can't like no. Cath, Cath you can't reconcile not that the whole time just deleting AI one person for like to make your memory okay. But yeah, so uh, it's it's not good. It's so gross. So gross. I don't like it. So gross. So mad. Fuck that. I'll talk about Sunshine Spotless it's, Mind yeah. is a phenomenal film, by the way, but it also is very upsetting to me. And yeah, like, I think this is very cowardly. I think the like it's just not good. It's bitch made shit. It says I think this is a dude who wants to hide from his feelings and not deal with his yes. fucking problems. You made a well, fucking we, and, and that's and that's exacerbated by you hear that. Well, he clearly states that when he gets in the car with Sam. Yeah. He can't deal with his feelings. So Dean because Sam calls Dean out. He's like, you've done some shady shit, but this is like extra. And Dean gets pissed, tells him to shut the fuck up and don't ever bring up Lisa and Ben again or I'll break your nose. Yeah, I mean, Sam literally says it's the worst thing he's ever done. And Dean like <sighs> made a deal with a, you know, with a demon. So we know like this is pretty bad. It is like, it is this fucked up. You just like fucked Gross. with a chick's head and you fucked with the kid's head and fuck you, Dean Winchester. Like, you know, who gave you the right to do this? And I know right. it was the writers because they wanted to wrap up the lean, the Lisa and Dean story plot lines. So we don't have to deal with them anymore. Ugh. And we don't like a new spoiler. I think, well, you know, they're gone. Yeah. For the most part, they're gone. I mean, but mm-hmm. like, it's, it's fucked up. I mean, like, this isn't like, you can't write people out. Oh man. Like, uh, me and my Great therapist will have a, a jolly good time with this one this week, but you just can't write people out of your lives by just moving away. You just can't do that. No, it doesn't work. <clears throat> sure you can. Doesn't Fuck work. off, therapist. All right. So, uh, all right. So, blah, blah, blah. All right. So, we've got them. Like, that's done. But we have one more thing before this ends. We're going back to Ellie's cabin. And she leaves her cabin to go to her Mercedes. But guess who's there? Castiel. And he boops her away. Well, shit. So now she found it. Or he found her. He found her. And my girl crush has been been taken. Taken away by... Angel. She's been angel now. She's been angel now. Where is, where is St. Eleanor? Oh, she's Dr. Eleanor, but she's St. Eleanor. Anyways. That's it. I, is uh, it there's, there's no casting couch for us, then, right? Casting I have a very, couch. very brief one. I don't think it takes too long. Right. Uh, it's the okay. casting couch. Were they on that show that time with that guy? I have a brief, okay. very brief one. I won't go take too long. Right, um, casting couch. So our casting couch. We are. We've got a few few folks to mention here. Uh, so we've got Judah, our 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 Lovecraft nerd, is Adam Graydon Reed. Uh, he was a repeat character on You Can't Do That on Television. You lucky oh. son of a bitch. Yeah. Um, and he's done some uh, voice work on some kids' cartoons. Uh, he was a re- recurring character named Hobbs on iZombie. And he was Peter in the Lost in Space TV series a few years ago. Um, then we've got uh, Dr. Matt, which is um, Lisa's new boyfriend that we see for like a second. Poor Dr. He Matt. Is, you you he almost is, uh, had it. You had a bitch bringing you beer. Yeah, he has... Um, he is an actor that uses a single name only, Panau, P-A-N-O-U. Panau. He's, act- he's actually done a little bit of stunt work okay. in the movie, like, in the show The Peacemaker and in Van, Van Helsing. Um, he was uh, Howard in the movie Eight Below, which is the dog sled movie. Um, nice. And he's been in TV shows like Smallville, Once Upon a Time, My Zombie, Bates Motel. He was one of the tank soldiers in X-Men Origins, Wolverine. Uh, he was a trooper in The Traveler with Val Kilmer. Um, he was Olaf in the uh, sci-fi series Caprica and um, has had small had small roles in the films uh, Rise of Planet of the Apes, This Means War, and Horns. H.P. Lovecraft was played by Peter, Peter Kuf. I can't do it, I never do, say this do right. It. Chufa. Chufa, I think it's it. how it is. It's C I U F F A. So I think it's Chufa. Nice. C I? C I U F F A. Fuck if I know. Sufa. Sufa. Uh, he's been in episodes of Fringe, V, Once Upon a Time, uh, Arrow, and has done his reoccurring small roles in his Hallmark Christmas films as well. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's this episode, which went from being like, 
kind of entertaining, comic booky, frustrating to I'm angry, Dean's a dick. Yeah. So and we have to think, you know, and we'll talk in a minute about why these this was not, you know, a there wasn't a cliffhanger here, right? This no. is we actually had an ending of a thing. We had a thing that started at the beginning of this season where you know, Dean was in his, you know, lawn mowy, happy suburban life with Lisa and Ben. And mm-hmm. this really just closes that down. Close the loop. That's come full circle. Done. Wrapped. Oh, that's kind of sad. It is sad. I don't like it. Yeah. And I'm the, I'm the, I'm the like, you know, the optimist that's like someday they'll figure out how to be together and do their own lives. Uh, that's because you're a woman who was born in the 80s, and so we were told that women can have it all and not be very, you can do that and not be exhausted. I mean, yeah, you can be exhausted, so it's just worth it. Right. Right. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, no, it's there's a lot of things. One, it was just we know it was a toxic, unhealthy relationship, but I feel like Ben has seriously been fucked up. I also think that I need to have a camera that points to my outside yard while I'm doing this. So, just so everybody knows, a man in a backwards baseball cap without a t shirt on, um, who has some terrible tattoos and a very pale body and basketball shorts, um, has now just walk past my window fun hi sir there's no way i could not mention that okay so moving on but yeah it's i don't like i think it's stupid i think you fucked ben up and i don't yeah. like how we, how like, it's not gonna be beneficial to him i mean like dean leaving is bad enough but at least like ben could call him if he needed something he had somebody to kind of go to even though mom was moving on and they knew he, he didn't I think have ben a father figure him. like no. this ends up like he ben's gonna be a serial killer like i think like Aww. we have a whole new very dark tangent of this where ben just becomes a serial killer because he has all these missing things in his mind but they somehow kind of control with monsters so he thinks that mom monsters are controlling him like i don't know like it doesn't end well like whatever happens ben does not not come out of this okay yeah reasonable and they just he just abandons them like i fuck with your memory Mm -hmm. but bye i'm never gonna think about you ever again or check up deuces it's the only way because that's how he can process which is just fucking unfair not yeah, because you can't process shit you're an un you're you're emotionally broken broken dean winchester you're a Mm -hmm. broken man you shouldn't date yeah. women at all. Like, and this is not the appropriate thing for you have done to Lisa, but no. you need to stop touching women or men, like anybody. <laughs> like, you need to go on a quest and find yourself, Mr. Winchester, and think about what you just did for a while. <laughs> go to your room. You go to your room, you Dean. And you you think about this. And uh, so what else happened this? All right. So we've got po- my poor girl crush, Eleanor, is being taken Booked by away. Cass. He was just acting terribly mm-hmm. it doesn't get better in um, case you're curious what you know what happens the next episode all right anything um, else all right fuck lovecraft blah 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 nah, 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 nah. all right i think we're ready to end the season all right so did we start the or, so we started this episode with fuck lovecraft and we end it with dean's a dick so i mean that's pretty good and and we love eleanor we do in the end so we're team good. eleanor that's it that's who we're that's who we're rooting for oh hmm Oh, so All right. We're back real quick with uh, season or Cheer- season six, well, episode twenty two. Cheers. cheers, bitch. Devil's Trap Podcast is a don't get a production. Meow. Devil's Trap Podcast is part of the Ship It Studios Podcast Network. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Devil's Trap Podcast, Twitter at Devil's Trap Pod. Or you can email us at devilstrap at devilstrappodcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave reviews, and share with all your friends. We're at all your favorite podcast outlets and at devilstrappodcast.com. I'm Babe. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Devil's Trap Podcast.